Hello friends, welcome to Knowledge India. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about VPN connections. So we have already covered in detail that how to create a VPC. And once your VPC is created, the next step which you would probably want to do is creating a VPN connection. So what are the advantages of creating VPN connection? The VPN connection basically creates a secure link, secure private link, I should say, between your VPC, which is there on AWS, and your on-premises data center. Once the VPN connection is established, you would be able to access all the resources within your VPC using its private IP address from your on-premises data center. For example, say earlier in your, uh, uh, in your office or within your organization, you might have used one of the machines which is there in your on-premises data center using its private IP, right? In the same way, once the VPN connection is established, you will be able to access a machine on cloud using its private IP itself, right? So the VPN connection is uh, all the data which flows on this VPN connection, it is going to be encrypted and it follows uh, IPsec protocol. So let us go ahead and see how we can create a VPN connection. First of all, we have few VPCs in place. All of you have seen this My VPC many times in many of the tutorials. Let's say, I'll, let me just filter it. So let's say I created this VPC. Now important part is before you create the VPC, you should have talked to your on-premises network administrator and request him to allocate a CIDR which is which is suitable or which is which would be basically free, right? So let's say for for an example, I talked to the on-premises network guy and I got this particular CIDR block. So what he will do is he will ensure that he would not use this IP range on any other machine within on-premises network, right? And that's why I am gonna use this machine here. So what, what I will do is I'll create my VPC with this particular CIDR. Once the VPC is done, we will go to the next step of creating the VPN connection. So there are two important things while creating VPN connection. First is creating the customer gateway. So come to customer gateway, press on create customer gateway, We'll give it a name let's call it my cgw my customer gateway now there are two types of routing which are possible static and dynamic in case of static you just have to put the public ip of the on-premises router so you talk to your network guy ask him to give you the public ip address of your router which is there on premise on on-premises network so i'll give you that in case it supports uh, uh, supports dynamic routing you can ask for that and there will be a unique BGP ASN as well. If you want to read more, please go ahead and read about it. It is gonna be a, you know, a kind of unique number. You can read about it more. So if your router supports dynamic routing, then you can get both of these things. So you can, for just for uh, you know uh, this demo sake, I am putting an IP address. Let's say you got this particular IP from your, uh, you know, from your uh, network guy. So you create your customer gateway. So once customer gateway is done, next step is to create the virtual private gateway. Before that, remember customer here in the in basically the, the tunnel or the connection which you are creating, in that this customer gateway is representing the on-premises end of the of the of the line or of the tunnel. This is representing the on-premises end. Now you are going to create the AWS side of end. And for that, you will create virtual private gateway. When you press on create virtual private gateway, you have to just give it a name. Let's call it my VGW and then I'll say create. That's it. And you need to create, attach it to your VPC. I'll go ahead and say attach to my VPC, attach. All right, now once this is done, we are on the last step, which is go to VPN connections say create a new vpn connection and give it a name let me call it my vpn and which virtual private gateway you want you will choose this and then you will choose a customer gateway which you have already created uh, i'll choose that and then whether you want to keep it static or you want to keep it dynamic you can choose that if you choose dynamic you don't need to give this IP prefixes here. If you want a static, then you need to give it. What is the static IP prefix? This is basically the CIDR notation, which is this is basically the CIDR range, which is being used at your on-premises. 
So if you, uh, if you talk to your uh, on-premises network guy, he would tell you that the complete, what is the CIDR for the complete on-premises network, right? Or basically how much ever you want to target. So you will get probably a bigger one. For example, if you, if you look at our CIDR, it is a comparatively smaller one. Uh, let me just press cancel and show you. If you look at our CIDR, CIDR of our VPC, it is a comparatively smaller one, right? Like 0, 10.0.0.0 slash 26. So it is a 64 IP addresses. Whereas the one which is being used on premises would be a, would be a lot bigger. So that particular CIDR you will get and you will specify here. So you'll say create VPN connection, give it a name and choose your virtual private gateway and the customer gateway. And if it is static, you go ahead and give that particular range. It might be something like this. You know, a big one, let's say maybe this, and you go ahead and say create. Now this will go ahead and create the VPN connection. So quickly to summarize here, you created a customer gateway, which is representing the on-premises end, and you specified the public IP of the router there, and you created a virtual private gateway virtual private gateway, which is representing the cloud end of the tunnel. And then you are selecting both of them and creating a VPN connection here. So it will take you know, a few seconds. All right, so as you can see, our VPN connection is you know in the creation state. It will take some time, but that's okay. It will come into okay state. You can go ahead and download configuration. What is this? It will download a file for you. So when you press on download configuration, it will allow you to choose the vendor uh, of the of the router which is basically on the on-premises side right? so let's say if your particular router is of cisco you choose cisco and then the series and then in that within the you know software version which is running and then you go ahead and press download when you press download it will actually go ahead and download one of the files for you right a txt file so i just saved that file and i have opened it let me show you that here so here is the file now in this, if you see, there are two important things. There are all this information, what is VPN connection ID, virtual gateway ID, customer gateway ID, all of these things. Um, then you have, uh, let's go down. You can see two public IPs here. This is one public IP and this is one another public IP. And there's a pre-shared key, kind of secret type of key, right? This is there. So this is what is required by your network administrator to complete the VPN setup. So you go ahead and hand over this file to your VPN connection, VPN to you know to your network guy who is there on premises, and he will go ahead and pick these public IPs and this uh, you know long keys, and with that he will be able to complete the VPN configuration on the on premises side. You can go ahead and check these IP addresses here as well. See here. 52, 225, 34, 214. These are the same IPs which you see here. So once he has completed the VPN connection, what you will see is one out of these two will be up and another one will be down. So all the time there will be two ton like like two tunnels and one will be up, another will be down. In case the one goes down, the other one takes up, right? And uh, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and then add the prefixes here as well, which is basically you will add the uh, uh, the on-premises uh, CIDR block. As I talked earlier, you will go ahead and add it, and then you will make it true, right? So you can do that. As many other times, it just picks up automatically as well. But basically, this is the step how you create a VPN connection. Now I cannot show the on-premises part, but on AWS side, whatever you do, this is what it is. So as you can see, this has come to available state as well. So there was a long pending request on the VPN connection. These are the steps. In summary, remember before creating the VPC, talk to your network guy and get a CIDR block. And with that only go out and create a VPC or else you will not be able to change it later on. That's very important. And after that, creating the VPN connection is actually quite easy on the AWS side. Thank you guys. Take care. Go ahead and uh, if you like this video, go ahead and share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.